Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to talk about um, common mistakes that Java beginners can make, are likely to make. Um, this includes first year students and um, other students who are not enrolled with the university, so they're learning on their own. But this is something that comes from my personal experience with students and this may or may not apply to you, so keep that in mind. Right, so this video is um, primarily oriented or um, targeted at beginners. And if you are not a beginner, then this is probably uh, not going to help you much. Right, so this is a list of things that I've written down, which are supposed to be common mistakes. Um, and we'll just grab through it and I'll talk you through all the things that I've found out. Right, so number one is string equals comparison. Let's have, um, let's define something like, so string one and string two. This is not something that you should do. If you have two strings, because string is a class as opposed to um, being a primitive, um, there are eight primitives in Java, by the way, int, double, short, float, um, long, boolean, char, um, basically these ones. So if it's not one of these types, then it's a, um, an instance of a class, which means that you should use equals and you cannot use double equals the double equals sign to compare values so here we are comparing two strings lexicographically that means you are taking the contents so abc abc and you're comparing letter by letter then these two strings i'll return true if they're equivalent or actually identical rather so that's that Number two is classes start with uppercase letters and then continue with camel case. Yeah, so don't write test. If this is a class name, don't write it with, don't start writing it with the lowercase. Start with uppercase and then continue so. So this class was string builder, we'd write string builder like this. Not like that and also not like that. This is the appropriate way to write it. With methods, it's different. You start with lowercase and then continue with camel case. So methods uh, number two, like this. And this is the same, um, this is exactly the same for variables. So if I had a variable string, variable name, it goes like this. Static versus instance methods. Uh, well, the difference is you have the keyword static for static methods. And for non-static methods, you would have no keyword. Static method refers to a method of a class and um, non-static or instance method refers to method of an object. So in order to call method number two, we can do test.method number two. Since it's static, we call using the class name. If it's instance, so method two, we first need to create an instance. Only then will we be able to call method two. So that's the difference between the two. Next is package names, or rather having packages at all. So when you create your project or a file, a class, make sure you're defining package for it. 
uh, once you've chosen the package, which usually is the reverse domain name, and then the last element is the name of the project. So if you had a project called Mario, then you'd use your reverse domain name if you had one, or you just type com your username and Mario. Things to note here is don't use uppercase letters in the package name and don't use underscore. Hungarian notation. Um, yeah, that's where you put C before a class, I before an interface type, uh, G before a variable name with an underscore to say it's a global variable and you put now to say it's a member variable. This comes from C++, so in Java it doesn't really make sense. And therefore, try to avoid that if possible. So unless you have a very kind of strong motivation to write that, like you've been given an assignment that uses Hungarian notation, which you shouldn't be really, um, try to stay away from that because the ID will tell you exactly what the type is, exactly what the variable type is, and so whether it's member variable, whether it's um, kind of instance variable or um, not an instance variable, and things like that. Um, Javadoc, and generally comments everywhere on everything. So yeah, that's the issue. When you have something like this, say you have a class called person and you have a variable saying name and then some would add a comment saying person's name. Well, it's fine when you're just starting to learn Java. Um, at some point, it stops making sense. It's just duplicating information and makes it redundant, basically. Because the more experience you get, you start reading the code first rather than the comments. So you, you start by reading this, which is name, uh, identifier for that variable, and the, its type is string. Then you go to read the class's name, which is person. So you kind of, you know, can figure out that it's person's name. So that is actually redundant. You don't need that. Uh, another thing is to um, write comments on methods saying essentially what the code is saying. So in this case, we might write something like, this is method number two, which is again, readable from the code itself. In fact, if you look at it, uh, the method signature gives a lot of information. This is the name of the variable, uh, name of the methods. It doesn't return anything because it returns a void. And it doesn't take any parameters, we know that. It's also a static method, which means it belongs to a class and it's public, so it's accessible from other different types of packages. So there's quite a lot of information encoded already into the method signature. So these things can be um, omitted from the documentation. What you should write in Javadoc and other comments is why you've done that. So the what question kind of falls out because we can read the code, we can understand what's going on in the code, more or less. What you're trying to convey is the message or rather intention why you've chosen that particular algorithm to use. Or why is it um, why is it this way and not that way? If you see what I mean. So for pathfinding, you could have used um, a star a star algorithm, and you could say, well, because of performance reasons and because of the results that it gives us, we've chosen to use a star as opposed to other types of pathfinding algorithms. Consistent indentation, yeah, that's very horrible to read if you don't have consistent indentation, so stuff like that, for example. Uh, just, you know, use automatic indentation um, if you're using an ID. 
If not, uh, you should probably use an ID. So that shouldn't really happen. In terms of the actual configuration of the indentation, I stick to four spaces, no tabs. Uh, depending on what you want to do, you could use different configuration. I usually try, try to avoid tabs because on everyone's machine, it'll look different. With spaces, it's at least the same view that you have. So if you use two spaces or eight spaces, um, either is fine. Just choose one and stick to it. Another important thing to remember about indentation, if you're joining a project, uh, then stick to what the project has already. Don't introduce your style to the project. Just stick to what it already has, because then you'll be introducing inconsistency, and inconsistency is always bad. Classes, instances, and objects. So this is a class. Uh, I'm not going to talk about object-oriented stuff and all that kind of thing. What I'm going to say is that an instance uh, usually append the word of something. So an instance of class test. So object one is an instance of class test. Um, and it is an object. So in that sense, instance and object are kind of synonyms. But object you can kind of say without the rest of the words that you add to instance. So you can say it's an object, but you don't really say it's an instance. You, you typically add instance of something. And references versus copy. When you have primitives, so let's go Get rid, um, get rid of that and a is zero and b is a what you have here is you've copied the value of um that was inside a into b if you change b now a isn't going to change with primitives this operation is copy String S1 and A. String S2 is S1. Actually, no, that's not a very good example. Um, let's do this is a person actually, since we want to have that. Person P1. P2, P1, P2, name, something. So in the first case where we had copy, we would change the value of B without changing the value of A. So A would still be zero. In this case, we're dealing with objects now um, because this is a class as opposed to this, which is a primitive. Here we've copied the reference, not the object. And so P2 and P1 are two references, but they point to the same object because there's only just one person we've created. So if we change P2.name to something, this is automatically going to change whatever P1 was to this because they are pointing to the same object. It is the same object that you're dealing with. And therefore, um, no matter how many references you have to that object, the object is the thing that you're changing, not the references. That's something to remember. Uh, it'll become easier once you start dealing with object-oriented approach um, for some time. Actually, implementing blackjack is the thing that helps people. I don't know why, but it's a good exercise. So if you can implement a game of blackjack, a um, very simple one, no need for graphical user interface and such, um, just implement the logic and um, hopefully this will help you understand the object-oriented um, paradigm a bit more.
or a bit deeper, as it were. Right, so these were the common mistakes that um, I've written down from my experience. If you have uh, anything extra to add, feel free to do so in the comments. Um, leave any questions if you have them, and I'll answer them whenever I can. Thanks for watching.